Next is the camshaft sprocket mounting flange. That's retained on the camshaft by a 27mm nut, but um, although I have a 27mm nut because of the length that the camshaft protrudes, you need what's called a box spanner. And when you do take uh, uh, the nut out, you need to provide some tension uh, to prevent the camshaft sprocket from rotating. And something like that is quite good against one of the fins inside the crankcase. Right, so I couldn't find a 27 millimeter um, box spanner, uh, and I couldn't find a 27 millimeter deep uh, socket, but I found a one and one sixteenth inch, which fits. Slightly different arrangement. Break it back. The engine is rotating. I might have to work out something to hold the engine down. Yep. Okay, I've got it now. Let's see if this works. Alright, so I've removed the nut and yep, there's a washer, it's called a, a Belville washer and according to the manual it's marked outside and yep, I can read that outside which tells you that it's facing that way. Must be a good reason for that. The actual uh, flange, and there's a little pin inside there. There it is, and that has to be removed as well. Yeah, so there's a little pin in there. And they all go together. So I've just turned the engine. This is the left uh, cylinder. And what we're going to do is remove the camshaft and the cam followers. And as you remove it, you need to keep them separate so you know which side is which, but also reassemble it in the same order as uh, the components came out so that uh, when refitting, you know exactly which sequence they go back in. So first going to undo the two uh, retaining bolts there. So I removed the bolt and I'm going to be using it to, this is, the spindle runs along there and inside this area it's got a threaded uh, hole, threaded end. I'm going to screw the bolt into that threaded end so that then I can grab it, that bolt with a pair of pliers and pull the whole thing out uh, using a screwdriver to turn the spindle to loosen it up. Just pulling that out and as I do. These components should be able to be retrieved. Alright, so I'll just pick that up. There. these back in the same order as they came in. Right, good. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll leave this screw 
with that one and put it in a bag. I'll wrap it up in a bit of paper so it doesn't fall out. Put it in a bag and label it as the left spindle. And I'll do the same for the one on the other side. So here it is. Left camp spindle and followers do not disturb position of followers and springs. Wrapped in a bit of paper so it doesn't move. I've turned the engine around so this is the front of the engine now and after removing the spindles and cam followers I can now remove the camshaft towards the front taking care not to scratch the surfaces Good. There should be a washer, there's a washer that goes in these bearing surfaces right inside there I'll see if I can just push it out yep and just gently tease it out and take it out okay and you can keep all that together there's your camshaft. Looks pretty good. Yep. Next we'll be removing the pistons and the connecting rods. So the left uh, piston is removed uh, this way and access to the big end bearing and, and the retaining nut is through the front of the engine between the gearbox and the crankcase and if I rotate uh, the crankshaft I can see through here the nuts come into view so there's one nut and then I keep going and there's the other nut and uh, so what I'll do I'll loosen up one and then the other and then carefully remove them make sure that the uh, caps don't fall off uh, and that'll loosen up the piston from the crank so what I've done uh, that's the rear of the engine and I've turned it on its uh, side so that I've got better access and light into the uh, uh, crankcase if I can focus a little bit and if I turn this you will see One nut. This is the left hand piston. Oh, must have missed it. Sorry, one nut there, and then the other nut here. I think. Yeah. Anyway, I start loosening them up. See how we go. So I've slackened off. They're pretty highly cranked up. But I've slackened off one nut, and then I'll turn the crank no, the other way, and I can do the other one. Just to give you some idea of how much force I'm putting on. So they're both loosened up and then I'm going to remove them completely. In what was a fairly tricky maneuver, I loosened up three nuts that retain uh, to retain the um, bearing cap or conrod uh, cap and uh, the other one I think the other I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, 
I then rotated the crank up the, uh, the cylinder and then I was able to remove the end cap. Shit, I forgot to put, to see which way it was. Uh, no, it's got some writing, so I should be able to figure that out. And then I went the other way so that I could actually feel the con rod coming loose. And then I'm able to push yeah, the con rod out. I'll keep trying that until the pistons, piston comes out. Right, I've been having a bit of trouble removing the pistons, so I've left it and I'm going to go ahead and remove the oil pump and clear all that off. I start by removing uh, the drive sprocket bolt, the other two bolts holding the whole thing. That uh, should lessen the tension on the chain and the whole thing can come out. I need to just hang on to the crank while I unscrew those. So I removed the bolt holding the uh, sprocket. Then I removed the two upper bolts. The whole thing's still pretty tight. Um, I will now remove or loosen the last bolt down the bottom. And that should slacken the chain. It did. The whole thing can come out, and I still have to remove that bolt. Okay. Should release that all, all part assembly. And there it is. Okay, I'll put all those things away. Yes, so what I had failed to realize is that I could reach the left um, side cylinder from the transmission area and I could remove two bolts. But I can only remove one bolt of the right cylinder and I couldn't figure that out. I had to remove the oil pump in order to get access from here to remove the final nut. The two end caps, bearing caps, um, uh, came out. I labeled them left cylinder, right cylinder and made sure which side faced front. And now I'm going to try and push the cylinders out by pushing on the con rods. Yeah, it's not easy to push these things up. <laughs> They're pretty well fitting in there. So I've had to put something hard up against the bearing side of the con rod. Uh, and so as not to damage it, I'm just using a, a towel and just slowly pushing up that way. And the piston is starting to come up. Just see it moving. There's one ring. Anyway, I'll continue working it until it comes out carefully uh, so that I don't scratch the uh, the cylinder bore or the, uh, especially when I remove the con rod, make sure that the cylinder bore isn't uh, being scratched by the con rod. I'm going to put the engine upright so that I can put it straight up. Okay, so when they tell you in the manuals and the books, just push on the uh, con rod and pull the piston out, that's not so easy. But anyway, uh, you have to find out for yourself. I just can't imagine, you know, if, a, if an engine is seized and the pistons are really grimy and, uh, and full of corrosion, 
they must be almost impossible to remove. But anyway, there's the left cylinder. And the uh, con attached con rod, the cap, and on the other side is the right cylinder. I'll put them all away. All these will be inspected later, checked. Uh, I noticed that uh, on one of the cylinders there's a bit of scratching inside of the uh, cylinder. Um, and cylinder walls, it may have been me, it may have been there already, I don't know. I'm going to see whether I need to do something about that. What I need to do now is remove the crankshaft and uh, ready for cleaning.